Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Knowledge. On today's episode, I want to try something a little different. I want to just have fun because you know what? This channel is supposed to be fun and this hobby is fun. So I want to try a different style and it's going to be what if. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to throw up four hypothetical what if type situations. And I need your guys help because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do in this video. But down in the comments below, I want you guys to give me a what if too. And on tomorrow's video, I will answer whatever the top four comments are that have the most likes. And then I also will potentially pick a few other what ifs and try to answer them. And they could be totally crazy what if type situations. They could be serious. They could be funny. So like an example would be somebody down below could technically write, what if Pokemon decided to reprint base set? A 100% reprint with no corrections at all. Same copyright date and everything. What would that do to the, you know, value of a Shadowless First Edition base set Charizard? You know, just something so crazy that we know couldn't happen. But I'll try to answer it as a what if situation. And I'll do my best to give a honest answer of what I think would potentially happen to the market. And hopefully these questions end up being fun. Also, it's going to kind of be fun too because there's a lot of people out there, they hate these what-if type situations. And I'm sure some of my what-if type situations will ruffle some feathers. But hey, it is what it is. I mean, I'll, pro yeah, I'll, I'll just start it off right now with a what-if situation. And people listening to this will just upset them for whatever reason. And that will be, what if Pokemon decides to re-release Special Delivery Pikachu. What would that mean? My answer to that what-if situation is simple. You're going to get a lot of people out there that are hoarding that card who are sitting on a pretty lot of them, and they're going to get burned. It's going to be their first real lesson in the Pokemon promo market, understanding that, yes, Pokemon can go back at any time they want and reproduce and reprint promos. And you know what else is going to happen? There's going to be a lot of foreign Pokemon collectors who don't have the ability to pick up the special delivery Pikachu from the Pokemon Center North America, and they're going to even be more upset. And if they did pay that extra, you know, higher secondary market price for the Pikachu, they're going to be upset too. But you know what? There will also be a lot of people out there that are extremely happy because they never had the option to either buy the promo in the first place. They didn't even know that the promo existed and they would have been glad to have paid $20 at the Pokemon Center for that promo. And maybe when they did finally find out the promo existed, they got priced out of it pretty quick. But you'll have a lot of people out there that are also happy that that promo comes back out because they'll get to just, you know, stick it to all the people that are making money off these promos. And I think there's going to be a lot of different people and a lot of different you know, sectors of this hobby that have plenty of different emotions and feelings about the reprint of Special Delivery Pikachu. But you know what? That's my first what-if situation. And my next hypothetical what-if question is simple. What if Pokemon is purposely keeping production low? And to answer that question, they would be geniuses. You know, plain and simple. It would be super beneficial to a lot of the collectors and the investors in the hobby. I think they would end up, you know, being extremely disingenuous to all their other collectors, especially the children out there who aren't able to get product. But I think from, you know, strictly business sense, erasing everything else, it would probably be beneficial from them. It could hurt them because they are leaving a lot of money on the table. But if they're able to artificially drive demand and artificially create scarcity and artificially create growth in the hobby, I mean, my hat's off to them. That would be amazing if that's what they end up doing. I don't know what the long-term effects of something like that would be. I think you would see a huge you know, drive up in modern product right now because no one really knows what the print runs or what the true scarcity of product is. You, you can guess, you can throw out numbers, you can look at allocations, you can do all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, 
No one knows for sure. But then you would get an answer, right? So then you would know that modern product is actually far scarcer than we were, we've been led on to believe. So then we would see a huge increase in modern product. And every product that came out from this time on, people would be scurrying to collect as much as they can you know, still keeping in the back of their minds that Pokemon is artificially keeping, you know, the quantity available on the market scarce. Yeah, that would have huge long-running effects for this hobby. It probably would be pretty detrimental in a lot of ways. Who knows what the long-term effects would really be. But that's the second what-if, you know, scenario. And for the third what if, we're just going to keep everybody's blood boiling because I told you earlier in this video, people hate what if situations or what if scenarios. So for the third, it's going to be what if Pokemon went back and they reprinted one of their extremely expensive, extremely high demand sets. And for this, we're just going to say what if they reprinted evolutions. And when I say reprint, I'm talking full reprint, ETBs, booster boxes individual packs, three packs, you name it. Anything they could print, they're going to print and they're going to do multiple waves of it. What if they did that? What would that mean? I'll tell you what it would do. It would pull back the curtain on hands down the biggest perpetual lie going on in this hobby. And that's a lie being created by a lot of people that have direct relationships with distributors who are getting product far below MSRP and it's going to really pull back on that, you know, farce of a battle cry that a lot of people in that situation like to cry that they sell product at market price. And, you know, it's real tricky wording that they use instead of ever saying like they're selling it at secondary market prices, you know, the fans, the community would really start to see because we wouldn't see a pullback in booster box prices from $1,000 back down to 100 You wouldn't see that. So you would start to see these people really take a lot of heat from people who whose eyes finally really start to open. And it would always be that same exact, you know, farce and lie we hear from these type of people all the time. And, you know, they'll call you stupid. They'll call you uneducated. They'll tell you you don't know about the macro. You don't know about microeconomics. You don't know about anything like that. You are you just don't understand what it takes to run a business. You don't understand. We have families to feed. We have overhead. They'll, they'll tell you all that. And then that will finally, finally be the big example for the rest of the community that these battle cries are just shielded lies, right? Because they'll say, well, we've been running businesses for years. And everyone knows that they've been doing that. But then you got to ask them simple questions. Oh, so all those years ago, were you charging this type of markup on product? And they'll go, uh, n no, we were always charging whatever the market price was. It's like, oh, but you were able to keep your lights on and keep a roof over your head at those lower prices. And they'll backtrack and they'll fight and they'll call you stupid. They'll attack you. It, you'll be wrong in that situation. But it will finally pull back the curtain. And a lot of people will see that people with those, you know, license with distributors and stuff are just taking advantage of people. And that will be the big outcome of a set like that being reprinted that has an extremely high price tag attached to it. <clears throat> you know, the big thing is you can go on eBay. You can go on, you know, a lot of these different websites and get product. The people that are dictating that secondary market price, especially when it comes to booster boxes, when you search lower prices, you will find the one person selling that has the cheapest booster box. They have 300 already sold, 300 still available. Guess what, guys? The people who are saying that they're selling at market price are the ones dictating market price. How ironic is that? Makes you laugh, right? And that would just be the curtain finally being pulled on just straight up liars, people taking advantage <clears throat> of the community. And the only way we would ever really be able to see that is if you had like a $1,000 booster box 
where they can then get it from a distributor and then sell it directly onto the secondary market at 400 bucks. That would be the, the big thing that would come from that what if situation. Probably a lot of people out there super upset to hear that, do not want to hear that, will tell me I know nothing. I'm stupid. I'm a stupid guy. That's it. That's what it boils down to. We're all stupid. We don't know what's going on. We don't understand the, the economics. We don't know what it's like to run a business. We don't understand that they were able to run the same exact business at different points. They're going to say, you don't understand. Our allocation numbers are way less than they used to be. Oh, uh, let me ask you, what did you used to get allocated in the past? Well, we used to get allocated three cases. Well, how many cases did you order this time? Because the price of product has gone up exponentially. Well, we ordered 100 cases. We only got 30 of them. Oh, so you were able to keep your lights on, only selling three cases in the past. Now you only got 30 cases, which is still way more than you used to. Please, you know, but that's a lie. That's what's going to... The, like I said, for that what if situation, the curtain will finally be pulled back and it will shed a light on a lot of this stuff really going on behind the scenes. And that's that answer to that what if. And the final what if to still get people's blood boiling will be what if Pokemon decides to make a premium product just for adults? Because that is the big battle cry, right? That the next generation, that the children you know, the future of the hobby is not going to get product. And I'm one of the biggest, strongest believers that we do want to make sure that the young generation gets their hand on product. But you know what? I love to have internal debates. And that's a great what if. What if you made a premium product that was not made for children? Well, in that what if situation, potentially, you know, your normal you know, traditional sets would start to potentially be available on the market, which would in turn allow, you know, more parents to pick it up for their children because they wouldn't have to go around all day hunting or spend crazy amounts on line. And then the people that were willing to pay the higher amount who do enjoy that premium type product, whether it's, you know, graded cards or, you know, premium type products, they would pay the higher price because that's what they're into. I think it would have a big what if because you would drive a lot of people. It would, you would excommunicate a lot of people from this hobby, like inadvertently, who are the value collectors and the value investors. You would push those people out. You would make it much harder that, for them to compete you know, with these premium products. And it would be scalpers dreams. It'd be what scalpers dreamed about, you know, a product that is made to be worth money and collectors and investors and everybody would be all over these products. It would be terrible in the long run. That's the what if it would just be terrible. It would hurt everybody. It would pull a lot of people through the mud, but I think there's a lot of people out there would like to see that what if. I think it's some, a what if a lot of people have been asking for. But I don't think it would be good for the hobby. And that's what if, you know, Pokemon decided to make a premium collection. But that's it. Those are my four what ifs. Now, I, for tomorrow's video, I'm going to do another part two what if video. But I'm not going to be answering my questions this time. I'm just going to be answering your questions. And you guys are the ones that are going to dictate what questions get answered. All you got to do is either write a comment that you want to, you know, hear the what if situation, or if you see somebody else, what if that you really would like to see answered on tomorrow's episode, all you got to do, hit that like button. And while you're at it, if somehow you're still not subscribed to this channel, you're enjoying this channel, hit that subscribe button. If you think that this was a ridiculous topic, hit the like button. I still, it still helps me out a lot. But, uh, other than that, guys, catch you on the next video.